I wanted Logan CB to get more big time opportunities and that's happening, but not quite where I expected. We'll talk about that. Plus some Ohio sprint car ride news, Brandon Shepard's championship chances, who might be our next first time late model tour winner and more. Let's go. It's Wednesday, February 28th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. A couple of notes before we get started today. I'll have episode two of the 410 Sprint Car Build with Zach Hampton out tomorrow. We'll continue to pre uh, premiere new episodes every Sunday and Thursday until the build is complete. I also have a shop tour video to throw in there as well. So lots of stuff coming in that, uh, in that playlist. And I, there is a playlist on the YouTube channel for that. So all of those will be easy to find. Also, a new Rico rundown is in the works, should be out in the coming days as well. So besides the Daily Show, plenty of dirt racing content coming your way. Uh, it was just last week I was on here talking about wanting to see Logan CV run more winged sprint car races in 2024. And things have developed very quickly, just not in a sprint car. A little bit ago, it was announced that CV will make his dirt late model debut this year in a Longhorn chassis with Clemens Power owned by Texas team Chris Bragg Racing. The deal is also a partnership with Vinny Giuliani and his new consulting business, VG Performance. According to Flow Racing's Kyle McFadden, CV will test the car in early April at Rocket Raceway Park, that's in Texas, uh, with his first race planned for May 8th, and that's going to come with the Flow Racing Night in America series at Spoon River. Uh, Flow Series appearances at Lincoln and Brownstown are also confirmed, and CV said he'd like to maybe race 12 or 15 times this season. And this won't be the first time we've seen CV in a late model. If you might remember back to 2022, CV tested the Rocket House car at Farmer City. And that relationship with Mark Richards developed out of the iRacing stuff that happened during the COVID shutdown in 2020. The slate of late model races will be in addition to the nearly 100 race USAC schedule that CV will tackle as he attempts a serious run at the USAC Triple Crown. We also know and have talked about uh, Swindell Speed Lab uh, wanting to campaign the California driver in some winged shows this year. And I've heard another winged deal is in the works as well with announcements hopefully coming soon on that front. It's nice to see uh, CV getting some uh, recognition and opportunities after this recent insane non-wing run he's been on, which we've documented, uh, you know, the USAC Midget Championship, Silver Crown, the stuff with the Chili Bowl. According to McFadden's story, it looks like Vinny actually went to the team with the idea, which I think is absolutely great. If you aren't aware of who Vinny is, he's been around dirt late model racing a long time. I actually interviewed him a few years ago when he was crew chiefing for Kyle Strickler. You can find that conversation on the YouTube channel and at dirttracker.com slash conversations. He's tied in with Longhorn and Bill Stein and was a key part of Jonathan Davenport's team for a few years when they were winning all of those races and all of that money. CV's calendar definitely starting uh, to fill up and I think 150 races might not be out of the question this year. If you missed it yesterday, I sent out a new issue of the Slider email newsletter. This one featured a piece by Jacob Horde. Uh, he's actually a new contributor to the Slider. Horde detailed the story of Ohio Sprint Car driver DJ Foo's 2023 season that was massively affected by a fire and the subsequent burns that he had to deal with for much of the rest of the year. You can check that piece out over at dirttracker.com slash the slider and sign up free to get awesome pieces like that delivered right to your email inbox. We're now up to 35 issues total of the slider. You can obviously find all of those uh, at that same email or at that same web address. If you'd like to contribute in the future, you can shoot me an email or a DM. I do pay for any submissions. Uh, speaking of Ohio, uh, area sprint car team Jay Kaiser Racing is back this season with driver Kel Thomas in the seat. Thomas hopped in the 23 in July last year after parting ways with the Demian Rudzik 49 team. He ended up winning in the 23 at Fremont in August and again with the Maverick Wing Sprint Car Series in their debut at Lincoln Park in October. Thomas told the guys over at OhioDirt.com that they are planning 60 or 65 sprint car races this season with potentially half of those starts coming against the Outlaws and High Limit. They'll fill the rest with racing around the area and maybe a little bit of traveling. Thomas had seven top 10s in 15 starts uh, against the All-Stars in 2023, including laps led at Attica. He's also got three career outlaw top 10s and has appeared uh, with High Limit just twice during their initial race back in 2022 and at Wayne County last year. Over at DirtOnDirt.com yesterday, they released their first top 25 of the season. Not usually a big power rankings guy, but I do like to see what they are saying about guys from time to time. Looking down through the list, I had a few thoughts on two drivers specifically. And the first is Brandon Shepard. 
I mentioned yesterday on the show, he's already raced 23 times this season, and his early consistency makes me think he can really bring the fight to Bobby Pierce this year for the Outlaw title. 2023, definitely a uh, learning year for Shep as he transitioned uh, to this new team uh, and to Longhorn Chassis from Rockets. And it was difficult, as Shep told me back in December. But those guys look to be on the right track so far. Seven top tens at Volusia between Outlaw and Dirt Car Competition. That was in seven races and a win there. And then 11 top tens in 13 Lucas races, including a victory at East Bay. That's the type of consistency we used to see from Shepard when he was in the Rocket House car, winning Outlaw Championships and finishing top 10 in 90 plus percent of the races in a season. Pierce won the Outlaw title last year uh, with an average finish of right about fifth. And Shepard is right on the mark so far. I think he's about 4.75. So he's going to be right in the mix. The other driver that I wanted to mention is Garrett Alberson. Now that Dalton Wilson has broken through for that first national touring win, Alberson has to be the next in line to win, right? We've seen him win down at the Wild West Shootout, and he led a bunch of laps at Georgetown last season in Lucas competition. Uh, he closed out speed weeks with three top six finishes in his last four starts. I don't know how soon it might come, but it definitely feels like he's the best in the country right now who hasn't won with either national tour. I think he's the only driver in the Dirt on Dirt top 25 at the moment, missing that all-important first victory. If you want some more dirt racing content this week, Winged Nation has Troy Wagaman Jr. and Jacob Allen, both of those guys obviously fresh off weekend wins. Passing Points has Landon Crawley and High Limit announcer Chase Rodman. Hoagie's Garage has Terry McCarl and Doug Johnson. Turn 2 Terribles has Jaden Wolf. Ohio Dirt has Max Stambaugh. And there are new episodes of The Dirt Reporters, The Dirt Nerds, Quick Time, and Dirt Track Confessions. You can check out all of these podcasts, the recent episodes, and links to listen to everything over at dirttracker.com slash podcasts. That's it for the Daily Show today. There is some racing tonight if you are looking for a fix. Speed Sport TV is carrying North Carolina Speed Week from Fayetteville Motor Speedway. They've got Crate Late Models, 604 Modifieds, and a couple of other divisions there if you want to check that out. You can find a link to that over at dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. All sorts of other good things too over at dirttracker.com. you got the analytics section. You've got the, you know, the Daily Show archive where you can find uh, the transcripts of all of the episodes I do here, uh, plus regular updating news right on that front page. Uh, you don't have to wait for me. Uh, if things break, they will automatically be there. So check that out as well, dirttracker.com. I hope you guys have a great Wednesday out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.